Hello YouTube. In today's video we're going to take another look at the Compact iPack that I have upgraded since the last video. First of all we now have an optical drive which I stole from the Armada E500 and which is very easy to eject. There's a button in the back and out she comes. We're going to put this back into the Armada because that thing needs an optical drive more than this thing does. But I just wanted to try it out anyway. So all I really have to do is put the lightning plate back in. And it's the other way around. And there we go. So, some other things I upgraded. I upgraded the RAM to 384 megabytes. The hard drive is now an 80 gigabyte. And I upgraded the CPU from the Celeron 500, which I have somewhere. Alright which is this one. This is the original Celeron 500 megahertz. We're not going to be using that anymore. It's going to be an ornament now. <laughs> this now has a Pentium 3 750. And of course, because we upgraded the CPU, we also need to upgrade the CPU cooler. Because... There we go. This was the original dinky little heatsink. This is not going to keep a P3750 cool, that's for sure. Still need to scratch off the remainder of the thermal pad. But, uh, yeah. I put in a uh, socket A cooler, well, just the heatsink part at least. And that seems to keep the system running pretty well. I mean, the Athlon XP's kick out a hell of a lot more heat than this thing does, so... It seems to be alright this way. If it turns out it needs more cooling, I can always add another fan to the CPU uh, cooler, no problem. So there's that. And that basically sums up the upgrades. Let's see if I can actually show you. There we go. Here is the inside of the machine. Here you can see the RAM. There's the hard drive. It's a Mac store drive that I pulled from a machine from work. At some point. And I forgot to add the uh, shield back on. So. Might as well just do that right now. If I can figure out how that went. I think it was something like this. Uh, maybe not. I don't actually fully remember how this thing was held on here. Could have sworn it was something like this, but actually held in, in there somewhere. Oh, now I remember. You have to put those in there first. And then... The rest basically just... sits there. Something like that. Oh well. It doesn't particularly bug me anyway. It doesn't seem to have any real effects on the machine, so... So that's basically that. So the only thing that really uh, remains now is to actually boot the machine up and uh, see how it performs now with its uh, vastly improved specifications. And here we are, all booted up. I've got Everest up here. Let's see if we can just uh, change the resolution here. It seems that right clicking is very heavy on it today. There we go, let's go 800 by 600. Alright. So let's see what we've got here. Windows 2000 Professional Service Pack 4, 384 megabytes of RAM. This chipset is limited to 512. The BIOS is from 1999. I cannot update that because it's locked with a password. Uh, let's see, Pentium 3E, 750 megahertz, which is a copper mine Pentium 3. The 3D accelerator in the graphics chipset is apparently the Intel i752 and 80 gig drive. It says it's 20 gigs because I didn't format the entire drive. 
and that's basically it for that page. All right, and the next thing we can take a look at is Office. We have Office 2003. Let's open up Word here. As you can see, it opens up nice and quickly. Let me go to first console bring up Excel. Also loads up fairly quickly on here. We have Clemwin antivirus, so we're at least somewhat protected. Wonderful MS Paint, all that jazz. Magic disk for mounting ISOs on a network, also very useful. This installation is fully updated, by the way. So all of the exploits have been patched. <clears throat> and of course, we can also go online, because we have Firefox. This is version 10. This is the last version that will run on Windows 2000 without kernel X. And it works just fine. In fact, I used it to download Everest and it worked fine. There you go. It will have some uh, problems with SSL certificates on newer websites, but most websites will work fine, such as this one, tweakers.net. We can browse through this just fine without having too many issues. Internet Explorer is of course utterly useless because we can't do anything with it. And of course we can access network. So resources like my legacy file share machine which contains all kinds of files for older systems. We can take a look at that. Of course we have WinRAR here. We have Opera, Demon Tools, some stuff like that. Just your regular software. Of course, we also have the uh, end-of-life office suites from all the way from Microsoft Office 4.3 up to Office 2003. That's very useful for older computers as well. And uh, that share is completely accessible anonymously from Windows 3.x and possibly DOS uh, up to the current gen Windows, but it's mostly yeah for other stuff. So, yeah, honestly, I'm pretty happy with uh, how this system performs now. It uh, was definitely quite a bit of a boost coming from the uh, Celeron 500. You can really notice, especially when browsing the web or doing some other heavy tasks, it's just a bit more zippy around. And, uh, yeah, that's basically an update on the Compaq iPack. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I thank you all for watching.